I keep a close watch on this heart of mine I keep my eyes wide open all the time I keep the ends out for the tie that binds Because you're mine I walk the line yeah, what a beautiful weather today, and we are we are here at Balliol College, and it's uh, one of the oldest college at Oxford University. Uh, okay, Professor Bergman, thank you very much for being with us, Voices from Oxford. Um, how do you feel today? Oh, it's glorious. It's going to be so difficult to leave this beautiful place and yeah. go back to Los Angeles. So you are going to pack tomorrow? I am. Yeah. I am, reluctantly. Yes. Yeah. So you have been here for a year? I yeah? have. Yeah. I'd like to start asking you about the cultural differences between the U.S. and the U.K., uh, especially based on your experiences at Oxford University. Well, they're hard to summarize because neither um, Oxford nor the U.K. nor the U.S. is particularly homogeneous societies. So it's going to be you know, sort of overgeneralizing. It seems that... Um, People in Britain are a little bit more self-effacing, and Americans are a little bit bolder um, in your face talking about themselves. Mm -hmm. And you, you get a sense of um, a different balance of, of listening and, and talking uh, yeah. b between, between different people. Mm -hmm. But it's been wonderful just to sit and listen to the amazing um, intellects and different perspectives around Balliol. So, what you are saying is um, uh, probably Balliol fellows, uh, they are thinking more than speaking, is it? Uh, or do well you, you think they are good listeners? Are they good listeners, but you have to ask them the right questions to get them started. Oh, see. <laughs> <laughs> and once you do, I think we also see some of the differences in the education system, like yeah. the seminar that we yeah. had this morning yeah. On, yeah. on MOOCs and technology, yeah. is that uh, particularly the Oxford system with the tutorial system, yes. it focuses on writing skills, on critical thinking, yeah. and uh, uh, developing the individual, mm -hmm. where the American system spend more, spends a bit more time on teamwork and collaboration and peer learning and partnerships. So when, when, even when we think about the role of technology in education, mm -hmm. you have to start with a very fundamentally different philosophy philosophy of, of how people learn and how they learn from each other. So mm -hmm. I think those kinds of things trickle down in, in subtle mm -hmm. ways mm -hmm. to the differences between our countries. But these days uh, the difference can narrow down though uh, because uh, we can study and uh, we can search anytime, anywhere using this kind of uh, devices. What do you think? And well, uh, the high, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to hear about your views uh, on hi extreme high speed and uh, what do, what does it do what, what to society? Societies. Well, it certainly changes the nature of interaction. Mm -hmm. um, and as we were talking with Dennis Noble mm -hmm. earlier, you have a rich interaction between what's online, what's mm -hmm. on paper, what's in print versus what's in video, people move much more fluidly between them. Mm -hmm. In the days when the internet was dial-up and you had to make a very deliberate decision to log in to check your email, mm -hmm. you, you didn't have that, that give and take, that iterative flow. Mm -hmm. And you certainly didn't have 10 windows open at once or 20 windows open at once on a screen this big. Mm -hmm. So the getting the high-speed internet is definitely a qualitative difference rather than mm -hmm. simply a quantitative mm -hmm. difference in the, the richness of, of interaction. I know we're concerned about the amount of time that young people spend on, yeah. on Facebook and, and texting and so on. But at the same time, why is it that we all want to come here and sit face to face mm -hmm. around the table mm -hmm. at Balliol and have mm -hmm. those tutorials? Mm -hmm. There's something about the, the human interaction of the technology mm -hmm. is never going to replace completely. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me how young people react to the internet and the effects on social interactions? Mm -hmm. I think the question is less how they react than how they engage mm -hmm. and how other people expect them to engage. Mm -hmm. Just like any other technology, 
it often is used in many ways other than mm -hmm. people, ex than the designers expected mm -hmm. it to be. Mm -hmm. And young people are particularly good at finding new uses for it. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things we're particularly concerned about with the use of technology in education mm -hmm. is so many of the teachers are afraid of the technology mm -hmm. and they ask the young people to, to check their technology at the door of the classroom mm -hmm. where if we were engaging with them mm -hmm. and using it to help them learn whether it's about uh, gaming, about peer learning, about other ways, I think we can use it in an even more powerful way to help mm -hmm. people keep learning than we have. The potential is very great and the potential is very great to work across countries and different educational systems as well. You know, earlier on, um, you know, at the end of the lunch, and at the end of lunch, uh, you happened to talk to Dennis, yeah. and you had a very serious discussion yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. about problem solving. Can mm -hmm. you tell us more about it and the problem problems? Well, we were talking. Actually, it started with a conversation that um, of a question Dennis asked me in my uh, my Smithies lecture about how well uh, Darwin and Einstein and other people who were real loners mm -hmm. would survive in this highly interactive collaborative mm -hmm. environment and one where people are being asked to publish open access, to release mm -hmm. their data, mm -hmm. to do very different kinds of practices. Mm -hmm. And we were discussing about what it is that makes a good scholar and is it the data that makes the scholar or is it the methods is it the content knowledge or is it the ability to ask good questions mm -hmm. and i think dennis and i agree very deeply that the the fundamentals of scholarship are the ability to ask a very good question and what once you can get the question down then the methods and the answers begin to begin to follow mm -hmm. so you didn't expect to learn you didn't expect to discuss that kind of things with uh, any fellows here today but you you did yes so and anytime lucky, and lucky anywhere me. yes you can <laughs> learn and uh, yeah. you can discuss mm -hmm. things so uh, it's a really great place to mm -hmm. be um, I'm very interested in your hat and uh, <laughs> probably you are the only professor who is wearing this kind of uh, hat, kind of hat that's true, at Oxford yes. University. Uh, did you bring it from the US? Is it Californian spirit? Uh, it is from the Blue Mountains of Australia near Sydney. Oh, I see. Right. And I got it uh, more than 10 years ago. Yeah. It's my favorite hat, and I wear it all the time. All the and time. And I'm, no I'm known around the world for this hat. So oh, right. I'm delighted to have it in the video because many people recognize me by the hat. <laughs> they recognize me by any other <laughs> How long have you had it? Oh, mm, 12 to 15 years. Really? Yeah, yeah. And the, the, the same hat? The same hat. Oh, same that's hat. amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we keep changing, you know, most yeah. of and want to yeah. change their hats. Yeah. Oh, I, have, uh, I have other hats, but this is my favorite. All oh, right, yeah. I see. Yeah. So how did the people react to you at the beginning? Now people may be used to seeing you with, with, with the hat, hat. Yeah, but uh, at the beginning. Well, it, it was very eye-catching. That's why, yeah. you know, oh, oh, the professor with the hat, I know. <laughs> Well, it's a professor with a hat, but it's also that people remember the hat. Right. And so you go back to a store clerk with the same hat on, yeah. and they'll know they've seen you before. All uh, right. And <laughs> even though I, I'd love to chat with the porters as I come into Balliol, uh, if, the, if they see the hat go by, they know who it is. Yeah. You know, they, they won't stop me with that, without the hat. Uh, right. In fact, I came by without the hat one day, and they, they did say, well, where is she? who is that? <laughs> right. Okay. Obviously, yeah. you had a wonderful time at Balliol mm -hmm. for a year. Are you planning to come back? At, at any invitation and, uh, um, and, and without invitation as well. Yeah. There's, there's so many collaborators, so many good friends here mm -hmm. uh, that there's a lot of reasons to spend time and, and I will spend more time here, yes. Professor Bogman, thank you very much for another superb interview thank and you. Uh, we look forward to welcoming you again. Thank you. I keep my watch on this part of mine. I keep my eyes 